This is how serious I am about this. I cleared my whiteboard. All right. I just hopped out of the shower because I was thinking about this. So I'm going to talk about a su some subjects that I have absolutely no right to talk about because I only vaguely understand them, right? Well, I'm going to call space time potential, right? My next novel is going to be a comedic sci-fi or science fantasy. But I have a few other ideas that I want to put into a different science fantasy. But, so I've been thinking, uh, so my next book is going to be sort of about the fourth spatial dimension, not so much time. But we do think about time as a dimension, right? Um, you know, so standard is, you know, we're here, we came from here, we're going to there, right? This is right now, this is the future, this is where we've been, okay? So, I'm just going to run through a really quick understanding of dimensions here, right? So this is, so this is kind of how we think about time. We can remember to the past, but we can only move forward, right? So, zeroth dimension is a point insurmountably small. I bet you can't even see it. It's so small from back there. And my shadow, I'm going to come to the right. My shadow's casting. So anyway, boom, right? And then one dimension is connecting two points, right? You can only go backwards and forwards, right? Second dimension, 90 degrees off of that. Now you've got this whole space to play with here, right? And technically down here and down here, right? So, third dimension sort of branches off at a 90 degree, right? From these two, right? And then, boop, 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 right? So, that's how we kind of think of it. And then the fourth spatial dimension, right, is going to be another 90 degree branch that's sort of unintelligible to us, right? Because we're three dimensional creatures. But some people, right, like to think of the fourth dimension being time, right? And we always hear about space-time, them being connected, okay? Right? Space-time, fabric of space-time, blah, blah, blah. And there's a reason for that. So we think about only being able to move one direction. So in that fourth dimension, right? Because if you're a two-dimensional creature, you can not you can only travel really along the zero third dimension, right? Again, I don't have any right to talk about this, but I really want to talk about this. So... There's a thing called a light cone, um, and the re uh, and, I, and it was I saw this thing, a British scientist, talking about it about how time travel would be possible, right? Because so if we think about it the same way, right? Instead of it being just a line, though, we think about it as potential. We think about it as being potential, okay? So if we're here in space time, right? Let's try and think about it just two-dimensionally, right? One-dimensionally, we're going to travel in a line, right? So one-dimensionally, let's represent it with different colors. So one-dimensional one will be blue. So we're going to travel. Oh, that doesn't want to work. That's unfortunate. Well, oh, yeah, let's choose a different color. Light blue. That one works. So, one, uh, so we're traveling in a straight line. So this is going to be... Uh, one directional thinking, right? Why should be a big D? One directional thinking, okay? So now if we think about it as two directional thinking, well, I mean, still, so, you know, we can go off in any direction as long as it's one direction, right? We can only go that way. And the reason I bring that up is because of a light cone. So, space-time potential, right? We are this single dot. How many places can I go right now from where I'm at, right? I can't travel faster than the speed of light. Okay. Let's say I could travel any speed up to the speed of light from where I am right now. 
99.9999999 on, right? So, I could be here, and I could be there, but it would still take me time to travel there, right? Take me point whatever, 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 whatever amount of time. So, there's a limit to how far I can go. I can't, for instance, be on Pluto right now, or I can't suddenly be on the sun, right? Sun's easier to grasp because we know kind of it's about eight minutes away, right? So I couldn't instantly be, because that's the speed of light. So it's longer than, let's say, nine minutes. I could be there in nine minutes, right? But I can't be there instantaneously. So the sun exists somewhere. Here's all the potential directions I can go, right? So this is me. Right? I can go anywhere in here. I can't go to the sun, it's over here, right? I can't go to Alpha Centauri, that's over here, right? It's beyond my ability to reach in the amount of, with the, with the laws of physics as we understand them, right? So it's a potential. In one minute, I can be sort of anywhere in here, right? In one minute, I can be anywhere in here. And in, in, in 30 minutes, I can be anywhere in here, you know? And then, like, so the sun, you know, would be, like, just barely in that example I gave. would be just barely off of it, right? Just barely outside. So I can be there. I can be there in 30 minutes, right? So this is one minute. This is 30, right? And then, and so on and so forth. So if I think about it more rationally, I could go to the bathroom, right? It's going to take me about a minute to go get to the bathroom, all right? So in that minute, I can be anywhere that I can get to feasibly in a minute. Only one course leads me to the bathroom. See, that's one trajectory, and that's the line I continue on. Now, technically, the line starts over every time, right? So once I'm at the bathroom, I have a whole new potential from there, right? I got a whole new light cone, okay? And the guy was talking about, uh, so now, that's, now I'm limited. Now I could never possibly reach the sun because I chose to go to the bathroom instead of going to the sun in my feasible time, whatever, actually, actually, yeah, it'd just be one minute, that's 30, so it's a big leap, but anyway, off point, <coughs> let me get some water, all right, so that scientist guy, right, he was saying also, and this is very poignant, all the things that led us to this point, only a very few amount of options could lead us to that point, okay, so for instance, nine minutes ago, I couldn't have been on the sun, in order to be here talking to you now, okay? There's a bunch of different points that I could have started at, right? So somewhere down here in this huge thing is me being born, but there's only so many potentials of these, right? You see how this new one starts a whole new one, which is like this now, right? Well, technically it's along the same line. It's just now, now I'll never be able to do any of this stuff in here is impossible, okay? So only so many points in here in life that I made choices and whatnot would ultimately lead me to right here, right now, talking to you. So that's all the potential possibilities given space-time limitations that lead to here. And now I have a bunch of possibilities to move on. So this is kind of, I, I like to think of it as one-dimensional time. And the only reason I say that is because there's only one possible way, right? So once you move to this single point, you can only draw a single line, okay? You can only draw a single line this way. Now, what he was talking about is that, um, you read that. What he was talking about is in order to time travel, we need some way to bend this light cone. Let me use a different color. We need a different way to bend this light cone in this direction so that the light cone would then look like this. And we're heading this way on it. So you see how it overlaps on this line? right there at that point we could travel back to a point in the previous light cones right if I started way down here and this is all the potentiality is like boom and boom right like from my original light cone right there in in history I could go I could travel back in time but the amount of energy that it would take and the amount of gravitational force it would take, I think I remember him saying that you'd have to be basically have a time tra a time machine that you knew was going to work and right at the event horizon of a singularity. If you could survive it, then you'd have enough to travel back in time. But that's not exactly 
what this is about. That's just an explanation of what I'm saying. Uh, like, to get started with what I'm about to say. So, what I was thinking is, you wouldn't need that much to time travel. Like, so let's say, science fantasy-wise, time travel to the past is impossible, right? We're, we're, we're moving generally forward. But, why couldn't we move across this plane here, right? This is the present, right? Well, let's say we want to travel along here. We're already here. There's only so many possibilities. So traveling along this axis here in space-time, right, would be a shift in science fiction dimensions, right? Um, I don't... This isn't a... I, what I've seen of Rick and Morty is great, but I haven't really watched it. But that's what the dimensions we're talking about, right? Alternate dimensions. If you move sideways, right? This is a different potential from your past. This is a different potential from your past, right? So this potential might eventually cross here. So you could end up in the same kind of place that this guy ended up, right? But you could never, ever have the same experiences that this guy is having because your life has only ever led to this point, okay? So if you traveled sideways across time, you'd only need to bend your light cone a little bit. You'd only need to bend it halfway, right? You'd only need to bend it that much, right? You'd only need to fill in that space to where all your potentiality becomes that way and you could move sideways because you're not moving back in time. And this theoretical thing, you're not moving back in time, you're moving sideways in time. So you're not breaking the past rules. And you would not nearly need as much energy. I don't know how much energy you'd need. But again, science fiction, I have no right to talk about this. But I love the like spatial dimensions and I love, I guess, temporal dimensions. Who's to say there's only like one dimension of time, right? So in this, we're thinking of time as a two-dimensional thing. Maybe there's even a third dimension that we don't understand. But the second dimension of time is parallel universes. At least in this bullshit pseudoscience crap I'm talking about, right? So, you could, so, so the thing that Rick and Morty talk about is, uh, again, watched very little of it, so I'm going to get shit for it if, if people, you know, if I get it wrong, obviously. But what they talk about is, an, is a finite curve, right, of, of potentiality, right, of like probability. So like here's where, you know, here's, here's the averages, right, here's where between dimensions there's almost no telling the difference, right, because this is where most of them lie. But then as you go further out and further out and further out and further out, right, you would hit more strange versions, right? Where, um, you know, maybe your one of your parents died when you were young or you never had uh, a younger sibling or whatever it is, right? Like, you get further and further out and the finite curve is the amount where things are still rational, right? Be where the Earth is a guessable relative position to where it is now, right? That there's no major gravitational flux and somewhere in the universe that caused the planet to now be somewhere else so you can predict with your dimensional travel where to be at because the earth is traveling in a the solar system's traveling wicked fast and we're traveling wicked fast around the sun and all that so to have us be able to pinpoint a single spot to land on the earth again right where we want is already really unfeasible but let's just say there is a finite curve of usable space because there's stuff out here where the earth was never formed right or was never inhabited, or or the impact that killed off most of the dinosaurs missed Earth, and things like that. All those different things were where the potentiality to move sideways becomes less and less safe, and less and less reasonable. Um, but that you could move sideways in time, and, and therefore actually anywhere, so you could, you could feasibly... That's that's my idea for shifting dimensions, if you will. That we're not we're not sliding through a different spatial dimension or a different pocket. We're simply tra traveling along potentiality of space time. There was something else I wanted to say, but I'm just so caught up 
and this thought that I'm just having a hard time. I, I, there was something I was thinking about here when I was talking about Rick and Morty about the finite curve, about possibilities and potentialities and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I cannot recall. I love it. I love the idea, right? Because how much energy would you need? Would it be much more feasible, right? As a sort of theoretical way of thinking about it, it's crazy. In the shower, and I was like, that's what, that's what this is, right? Like, that's, that's what traveling sideways is. I, I guess I'm just rambling at this point. I'm trying to recall what I wanted to say. But, uh, alas, I cannot. So that is a concept of, of, of traveling along potentialities and let's say you only need to go so far off your potentiality, right? So let me redraw that. This is, this is kind of the concept I want to work with, with like, I guess it would be my fourth or fifth book. I'm still writing my first and yet I've got all these stupid ideas for more books. But let's say, let's say you've got your light con, right? You're here. This is all the potentiality that you can get to without ever changing reality. But let's say you're fighting some guy, right? You're just like gunfight, fist fight, whatever it is. And you could really use to be behind him. Well, like I said, that's just barely outside your light cone. So you wouldn't need the event horizon of a black hole to travel there. You wouldn't need to change it to such a drastic angle. You just barely need to change it, right? Making this a much more feasible technology because now, now you're traveling sideways. And fundamentally, right, the universe could have, uh, the Earth could have formed 10 minutes later than it did. So this is the equivalent present here, right? So that. So where the equivalent present in another dimension is right here, right? So all you need to do is barely twist it to be able to travel back in time. Timeline that looks like this, where here's your timeline, and then you branch off to a whole new timeline. And when you leave this timeline, you go back to your own or wherever you want to go on it. But if we're saying you can only move forward, right? then you can only ever move directly across. Making dimensional travel, time travel, all that stuff more dangerous. You could go back to a time, you could go back to an equivalent backwards in time, right? Let me redraw it. So this is yours. You go here into a different timeline and you're you're gone from here, right? You're gone, This this no longer has you in it, but this is your original timeline, right? Now you can go straight back and then there you'd be again and you'd be gone for this period of time, just poof, right? Or equivocally poof, you can't just make, create or destroy matter so there'd be some sort of exchange, but that's not the point. You could then go to a parallel universe where this time is right here and this you never comes back either. But the thing is, is now this original timeline you're dead. You're, you're donezos. In this reality, and the one you're originally from, you're gone. Poof. Vanished. Right? And then you'd continue you you yeah and then there's just right here and then you'd continue on sort of as an imposter now you could transfer into one that's like the finite curve right there's an infinite possibilities but it's also finite in the fact that the further you go, there's an infinite amount of limited possibilities. 
there's forever amounts of slight differences of where literally it's one second behind or two seconds behind or nanoseconds behind or nanoseconds ahead or whatever it is, right? So there's that infinite amount that you can always find one that's basically yours, but then you have to live with the knowledge that in your reality, you're dead. And I think there's a Rick and Morty episode about that. They're gone. Effectively, they're dead, right? They, they replaced somebody else. They're an imposter. In this red timeline, they're an imposter. And I know you get that, but what I'm saying is that, like, even if you could time travel, there's still that repercussion. There's a video, I don't remember who made it, on YouTube where... This guy wants to talk to this girl on a bench, and he has a functional time machine that puts him back, it's like 10 minutes or something, right? And so he keeps trying and trying and trying, and then she goes, and then he goes, oh yeah, and he basically just fesses up to her about, hey, you know, like, I've been using this time machine, and she goes, what about the repercussions of, you know, blah, blah, and it goes back, and the difference is, is that when he time travels, he's leaping his consciousness into another set of reality kind of like this except for his body is staying behind but he's he's dead his body's just laying there and i wrote a b instead of a d congratulations dead um and he's just dead he just presses a button and dies so in that version of reality he never time traveled to him alone he time traveled to him to everybody else he just press that button and die. It's a killing machine. It kills you. When you press it, you die. Right? And, I mean, you could always move back to your original timeline. Right? But you're you're gone from here to here. Right? You're, you're, you're dead this whole way. Even through that leap. I just think it's an interesting limitation on time travel. And it's effectively... It's effectively an interdimensional thing, right? But it's not. It's time travel. It's just tra traveling... Instead of traveling st on a straight path, right? Timeline. As soon as you're creating another timeline, you just move two-dimensionally, right? So this is the only line you're allowed to be on, if it's a line, if it's straight moving. Which again, means that you could pseudo, right, if we went, oh, this is point A, and this is, and this is point, point X, right? Then, then you're moving into the equivalent point A, okay? So A and A, they're the same, but you're not actually going back in time. Time travel to the past is impossible. It's a sideways move. I just, I think it'd be interesting. Out of all my ramblings, that's pretty much it. But using this, this, like, imagine you're an ex. I was thinking like that as like a pro is kind of a thing. Like, like some bullshit scientist or whatever is like, you don't get to time travel. That's not how it works, you idiot. Blah, 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 blah. You just fucked everything up. Yada, yada, yada. And he goes... And the guy's like, what? And he goes, yeah, imagine an X. Imagine an X, and you're at the center of it, all right? And you can go anywhere this way, and blah, 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 but, but you can't do this, and you can't go back in time, so, you know, all you did was replace your, li your life with another one. And now you got to live with all that. And I was also thinking about, like, like, like fighting somebody, right? Like, I I'm, you know, like, I'm hiding behind a crate, and I'm like, man, I could really use to be behind there. And you shift your potentiality to where you just are. Teleporting, things like that. Like, effectively you're moving sideways through time or some some overarching threat to time space. Space time. Time space. Time space. I guess it would be time space. Space time, right? That, that imagines that it's like the Earth, right? Space with plus time, but with this, it's, it's, right, it's your, it's your potentiality, that just happens to include space, it's time plus space, right?
food for thought. I feel like there's more I want to say on this subject, but uh, I don't know. I said what I wanted to say. Not all of it, but enough of it. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. And uh, if you like me rambling about book ideas or, or whatever it is, or yeah, you want to hear more about my books, let me know, because uh, um, I can give you the running title of four of them. Is it four? Yeah, I've got, I've got the first, the one I'm working on right now. Don't like the title very much, but it works, which is uh, Scars in Twilight. It's a dark fantasy book. And then my next book is going to be Escape to the Fourth Dimension, which deals with the spatial dimensions, not temporal Temporal dimensions. It functions on a whole different thing. A whole other thing of bullshit pseudoscience like like what I'm talking about here, right? Where it's where I barely know what I'm talking about, but it, I think it's in a fun way. I know enough of what I'm talking about that <laughs> that it at least sounds like grade A bullshit, but it but you still know it's bullshit. And the next one is a, a, I don't know what you call it, the third book would be, uh, it's a fan, it would be a fantasy, but it's not a, necessarily a dark fantasy, it's, it's like a buddy cop fantasy, and it's called The Last Dragon Slayer, that's again the running title, it's just to keep, sort of like a, you know, in a, a, a file cabinet, being like, oh, all the files that pertain to Jacob or whatever, right? Like, that is what it entails, right? It's just a holder for the folder in my brain. Um, and um, the next one is The Man in a Rainbow. Man in a Rainbow? And that one I know even less about. <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's a cop drama. And it's pseudo-modern. And then I've just got a few other ideas kicking around that could be just going to some of the books and could not. But I've already got a rough plot for fourth to, Escape to the Fourth Dimension and a rough, a rough concept for... Um, Uh, the Last of the Dragon Slayer. Again, these titles are probably most likely already taken. But, again, they're just my running titles for basically, like, how I want to think about them, how I want to explain to them, and when I refer to them to people I know. But, yeah. Um, oh, and also, if you want to hear about any other projects I'm working on, I'm working on a Super Metroid fan game. Still bare bones. Like, really bare bones. Uh, RPG, uh, like a JRPG thing that I I made a long time ago, but I'm going to remake it. I never released it a long time ago, but I've lost all the files, except for the ones up in the old noggin cabinet. Not as clever as, what did I call it? Folder, folder, holder, uh, holder, folder, I don't know. Anyway, um, and then I'm making a board game. I've had, um, I've had a few partners come and go on the board game, but I'm still persisting at it, so let's see how that goes. And um, I think that's all my big projects right now. Anyway, thank you for joining me about my silly rant. My rant that consumed so much of my thought in the shower that I had to rush out of the shower, wipe down my whiteboard that had all my book notes. Well, it didn't have all my book notes. It had my book notes, and it also had some... Um, variables for a program I'm working on and I was also thinking about doing a tabletop like my, not my own tabletop RPG but like modifying other stuff more just for my own personal use not like I was going to actually sell it or whatever and then a few ideas I had for once I finish my Metroid game and go and make my own game based off of the same engine and I was like it was like sci-fi stuff like 
what if a planet had a semi-frozen core and the sun, or the, the, the star, I should say, that it orbits, bombards it so heavily that you end up with um, ice geysers, geysers of slush and ice and whatnot. And I was like, that'd be a cool thing. And, and like Super Metroid, instead of going to like Meridia or Norfair, you go to different planets. Sort of like in, what is it, Prime 3, Corruption? Yeah, I think that's the one. But anyway, not my point. Probably have a few more projects going on, but those are the ones that I'm rattling around in the old noggin. Anyway, I'll be in.